those arachnoid granulations because it's in the arachnoid mata. We have a huge blood supply, arteries and veins, okay? Anything that is a fluid of the body that washes over tissues, that comes to the tissues, that serves the tissues, everything has to go back to a vein. Isn't that wonderful? Question. So when studying the, the brain and studying the heart, they work similarly but are very, very different. Because don't the, the heart have the four chambers and the veins and the waste and all that it goes into that with Okay, so. When we think about the heart, okay, if we think about blood that leaves the heart, which is going to be from the left side through that aorta into arteries, which are going to branch, 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 branch to a capillary, and they're termed a capillary bed because they're this really cool structure, okay? So my artery that leaves, the, as the arteries leave, bringing blood from the heart, which is full of oxygen and nutrients that we need, okay? So as it comes and it enters on the arterial side of that capillary bed, over here at that capillary bed, we meet the venous side. And it's where everything gets to move out from the blood flow that came in, the tissues that use material have put their waste, and over here, waste get to enter on the venous side, come back to the heart, because huh, where do we have to go? Where does the majority of the blood flow go? Every heartbeat to be cleansed. Kidneys. And then on the turn to that venous side of the heart, clean to start the process all over again. In the brain, every time the heart beats, and we're going to talk about this, every time the heart beats, a huge amount of that blood flow, which is hopefully for the most part clean, okay, it's going to go to the brain to help feed this process, okay, create the CSF, let that wash over, let that get returned to veins within that arachnoid model, within those areas of the brain, to go back to the heart so that as the blood that comes to these ventricle areas gets to produce clean, do you see how that process moves? Okay, so that's the goal. Okay, that is the goal. However, the brain has to work very hard to do this. Those glial cells that are present, okay, those glial cells, you talk about having to work hard, okay, because they want that blood that's going to supply any of that tissue to be as filtered and clean as possible. They work hard. 24-7, 365, 366 is at the least. So what happens if um, for some reason like they couldn't get the loose out? <sighs> Yeah, but that can lead to some problems. Woohoo! Some of it can be fun, some of it not. Okay? Because, yes, there are toxins that'll make it across. <clears throat> hmm. Hmm. Some of those toxins can make people have 
Good feelings? Some of them? Not. All right. But some of them can be damaging to the actual nerve of the brain. So when I say that these cells work very hard to keep it cleansed and not have any type of detrimental products, they do. So this, the, the cerebrospinal fluid itself, okay, when it gets formed, that blood that has had to make its way to the capillaries, to the cells of that choroid plexus has had to go through the glial cells. So hopefully that blood supply can be used to make the CSF, which will fill up those ventricles. And because every time our heart beats and because it sends blood to the brain, it creates a pulse-like action in the brain. Any of y'all ever felt your heartbeat in your brain or in your head? Okay. That's happening every time your heart beats, whether you're aware of it or not. So it kind of creates like this wave-like action and it helps to keep the flow of the CSF moving so that we get that production, but we also see the fluid go from laterals, one and two, to the third, to the four, a little bit makes its way into the spinal cord to wash over the tissues of the spinal cord and begin to continue to have a flow. So that we not only get the production, we get it washing over the cells, moving down the spinal cord, back up to an area where we get to empty it out. So is that why when people have strokes, sometimes they have that memory loss? A stroke is going to be from the actual blood flow. So if you remember from the earlier picture where it showed the actual brain tissue itself, mm -hmm. okay, the actual brain tissue itself is very well vascularized. And if anything causes blood flow to stop to the tissue, we have a stroke. So that is the actual blood flow to the actual tissue itself. And it causes that tissue to die. And the problem is it doesn't come back. That's why Anything that damages the brain tissue itself is so detrimental. Well, I, I'm trying. I, I'm trying to figure out 
reasons why they might have said at the age of 30. Um, I mean, I know that in the 30s, it think certain things become significant. Um, hormone levels change. Um, tissue, the ability for tissues to regenerate changes because you know the nerve tissue doesn't regenerate, but the glial cells do, and blood vessels and that sort of thing. So I'm going to actually have to do some research to see why they pointed out the 30s. But they even with the magnesium therapy, I didn't know how serious it was. Yeah, and I was like, you know, but I guess back in the day, you had to stay in a dark room and can have no business, no stimulation. You have to just lay there. Which might have been a good thing. Yeah, yeah, but now it's a good thing. Now they just give you the magnesium therapy, yeah. and you can like taste the metal in your body. In your body, yeah, do that. So like now, though, like in my thirties, I feel like different parts of my head will hurt, and so I don't get any rest. So, like, yeah. I do you have any doctors you work close with in Virginia? Well, I'm definitely going to ask. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. I work with that because every day, and like, um, a lot of them know me and see me go through my breaks and everything. Oh, okay. I know. Oh, yeah. They're always telling me, like, you know, slow down. They need to. Y'all, you know, y'all should put the preeclampsia. Yeah. 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 And I'm wondering if, you know, the, the different factors are coming into play. Y'all check with them. Right. And I'm going to check too and, and let me know. I'm going to ask too. Summit, so the doctors from California are actually coming. Okay. And I know they specialize in stuff like that. So I'm definitely gonna ask. It's like our program director. He's in cardiovascular health. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna ask him. Hey, my uncle, I'm heart as well. Because I work in the history, a family history of heart issues, and they always keep a close eye on that as well. We know, like, since 1990, I can't even stroke. 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 I can't even yeah. of the tissue <laughs> remaining to take over. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we And in the case of a stroke, that is um, one of the things that becomes important is how much of the tissue was damaged and if remaining tissue can take over the abilities that were handled by that section of the brain. So um, <clears throat> that's really interesting. I'm going to check into that. So in CSF, we produce about 500 milliliters per day, okay, which, you know, is a half a liter. And if you look at a half a liter, that's a pretty good amount that we produce. And um, the cells that are in these ventricles, as the blood comes through, we get to modify that filtrate because, like I said, those ependymal cells being glial cells, their goal is to protect the actual nerve tissue. And the flow is affected by our heartbeat. It is a patterned flow. There is a specific pattern that occurs in the tissues. The goal, give the brain buoyancy. Let it be floating in this cranium that we have. Give it protection, working very hard to keep any type of toxins or chemical, anything that could damage the actual nerve tissue. Keep it out. And chemical stability. Now, a couple of things about this chemical portion. The only molecule nerve tissue can use for energy, glucose. That's it. The brain makes sure to maintain its pH. The chemical stability of that nervous tissue is extremely important and CSF is going to help with that. If we look at the pattern of flow, this is the pattern and this gets moved with heartbeat. If we simply start at number one where it's showing me that it began 